Here we are, Carolina dominates game four in a series full of dominant games. Not a single close game at all in this playoff series. This one felt like the most dominant. And it's because Carolina, for the first time in the series, had to respond. They couldn't keep doing what they were doing. And basically, New Jersey is very good at using their speed on the rush to create scoring chances. And Carolina responded by basically completely getting rid of the rush. They would pressure, kind of, I would say almost play a modernized trap, but there was a slight difference in, like, which is ironic, playing kind of an almost effective trap against New Jersey is after they, I think it was after they got a goal or two. I'm going to be honest, that third period, honestly, even though my team was up, was a little bit of a slog to get through. But in general, Carolina just, they started nullifying the rush because New Jersey came in, they continued their way in the first 10 minutes of play, and then Carolina was able to dominate through the rush. Carolina nullified the rush by just dumping the puck at whatever they got. It turned, forced them to turn over the puck, and instead of trying to pass, pass, make plays to get in, they just took to the red line, dumped, chased, and Carolina is one of the best four checks in the league, and they four checked. And they just kept doing that all game. They got turnovers out of it, and it just the Devils could not respond because they couldn't get their rush going, and that's the Devils' bre bread and butter. So... Carolina did that, and then they were smart about it, too, like the Natchez goal. Once they got the New Jersey Devils expecting them to rush the puck, Carolina would then make a play off the rush, and that's how Natchez got both of his goals tonight. And the game just kind of continued, and then they just every shot they had went in. It was hard to tell what they were doing right because they were just scoring so much that it was really hard to almost follow the play in that, like, yeah, I mean, it was a lot of their forecheck. I might have to rewatch the highlights at some point just to really see. But I really do think what changed the game was Carolina going back to the old reliable dump and chase. You know, Nation has got two goals off the rush. And then once they tied it, they kind of kept dumping it in. Brett Pesci came from effective forecheck. Jesper Fosco. God, this is getting so hard to remember all the goals because they scored so many so quick. But... Yeah, Jordan Martinuk was another goal off the rush. So they started playing the rush again in the second period, but 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 the Devils weren't expecting it. Brent Burns' goal as well, the clapper, came from the forecheck, but they really relied on making the switch from trying to rush the puck to the dump and chase. I think that is how Carolina won this game. And then they would switch it up on New Jersey. New Jersey couldn't figure out what Carolina was going to do and what they were going to do with the puck. That unpredictability was created through predictability. So, yeah, I mean, then they just constantly shut them down. Jacob Slavin, I don't think was talked about enough on the broadcast because Jacob Slavin is never talked about enough. He legitimately just had a really quiet, solid night defensively. When he was on the ice, even when it looked like he was going to get beat, they just couldn't get past him. They literally had him beat at some point. He was able to swat the puck away and take away the scoring chances of Jack Hughes specifically. I mean, he suffocated Jack Hughes into the boards, laid a good hit on him, and then there was one play where it looked like Jack Hughes was going to successfully toe drag around him, and Jacob Slavin swatted it away. That was another effective way was Carolina's defense, other than the one turnover by Brett Pesci, which he more than made up for by scoring a goal, was just suffocating in the D zone and able to break it out. And when they did have the puck in the offensive zone, or when New Jersey had the puck in the offensive zone, they couldn't do anything with it because led by Jacob Slavin, they just completely shut them down. And Frederick Anderson, I don't blame him on the goal. Deflection, net front presence by New Jersey, just all turnover. But while I don't blame him for that, Frederick Anderson made a few key saves when he needed to. So it was just an all-around team effort of domination that led fans leaving at the end of the second period. And, I mean, I don't... I'm very excited, but I got to remember it's not over till it's over. It's three games. New Jersey has come, came back from being down 0-2 against uh, the New York Rangers. And then Boston has given up a 3-1 lead. I'm trying to remember if there's been any other, like, giving up leads. But the series isn't over. So I'm not going not gonna to sit here and be like, you know, oh, wow, well done, Carolina. You won a series. Even though they played great for... Most of the series, it's 
you know, it, it's, and I don't think Brenda Moore will be saying the same thing either. Brenda Moore, a lot of this came from Brenda Moore's coaching. I think I might start calling and I'm insanely biased, but Brenda Moore might be the best coach in the NHL right now. I, I'm just going to say it. He might just be the best coach in the NHL and it, it's long overdue. He had a great, I watched his great interview during my work shift, came home, watched him put on another coaching clinic. So yeah, I, there's not much to say because everyone played a great game. I think it was really simple. A simple switch is what really created the domination from New Jersey. And New Jersey also got panicked once they lost the lead and gave up the and gave up the lead to Carolina when Carolina was up to one. They also panicked. So, and then one more item of note: Hurricane of the game. I talked about how he had two goals. As much as I'd love to give it to Martinuk because I do kind of prefer Martinuk over the player I'm going to give Hurricane of the game to. Marty Nature stepped up tonight, scored the first two goals of the game, and in a blowout game, the early goals are the biggest ones to me because the game's still up for grabs there. So it's a lot of sometimes analyzation can be who's doing what when the game really is up for grabs. And Nature just took it by his hands. He legitimately made a nice deflection off of Martinuk's pass, and then he did it again with, I don't think it was a Martinuk pass. I'm going to look up who passed the puck because that was even a better play to get the puck through on, e I think, Palat, which is weird that Palat was on defense. But, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. it was Brett Pesci. So, Brett Pesci with a 2.9 after turning over the first goal. Net positive for Brett Pesci. So, yeah, hurricane of the game. Got I got to give it to Marty Natchez. He stepped up when I've called him out multiple times, even over the course of this playoff run. He stepped up tonight, so I got to give him hurricane of the game. Uh, if you guys like the content I'm producing on the channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when I upload. And lastly, it is, I'm just doing the math in my head, nine down, or not nine down, seven down, nine games to go. Let's go, baby. <laughs>